Welcome back to part two of our DBT course series. If you missed part one, the link for it will be in the description below. Part two of this series will focus on getting DBT course set up and then running your first command in the cloud. This tutorial will follow the steps using Amazon's Redshift Cloud Data Warehouse. If you use BigQuery, Databricks, or Snowflake, we'll have specific guides available for those three Cloud Data Warehouses in the description below. Before we get started, we have two prerequisite activities that we need you to complete before you can continue with part two of this series. The first prerequisite that you'll need to complete prior to starting part two of this series is to create a GitHub account. After you've created your GitHub account, or if you already had one made, you'll need to fork the repository that is listed in the description below. This repo contains the starting points of a DBT project that we will edit to work with our sample data. To do this, you will also need a text editor. While you can use whatever software you like, I recommend that you download either Visual Studio Code or Atom. The links for these two programs will be provided in the description of this video as well. Once you have those two items completed, open the DBT Project YAML file with your text editor of choice, and we are ready to begin. Inside the DBT Project file, we need to make a few changes to make this project specific to our sample data. First, we need to change the project name to soccer underscore 538. Change the profile to soccer underscore 538. And then change the model name to, you guessed it, soccer underscore 538. Under the soccer 538 model, add a staging and marts folder that are both materialized as views. Save the changes that we made to the file. Now open the profiles YAML page. The profile YAML file provides a DBT with the database information that it needs to connect. We will now paste the code block from the written guide into the file. The written version of this guide is available in the description below. It is important that you change the host and database name to the specific information for your Redshift setup. You will notice that the user and password fields are inputted with an environment variable. We will pass those in later so we don't have a password freely available to any user that sees our repository. Next, we will need to create a Python script that will allow us to run dbt core in the cloud. Create a file in the root directory of the repository called execute underscore dbt dot py. We will paste the code from the guide and save that file. Now that we have our dbt profile set up for Redshift, we need to create our models that the dbt job will run to transform our sample data. Next, we want to navigate to the models folder of the repository and delete the example folder. Create a new folder inside models called 538 underscore football. Create two subfolders in, inside 538 football. The first subfolder will be, will be named staging. The second subfolder will be named marts. Inside of the staging folder, create a file called stg underscore football underscore matches dot SQL. Enter the following code into that file. Select star from soccer dot stg underscore football underscore matches. Save that file. Create a second file in the staging folder called stg underscore football underscore rankings dot SQL. Enter the following into that file. Select star from soccer dot stg underscore football underscore rankings. In the staging folder, add a file called schema.yaml. I will paste the code for the schema file from our written guide. Now transitioning into the marts folder, create a file called mart underscore football underscore information dot SQL. Enter the following code into that file from our guide. In the Marts folder, we'll also need to create a file called schema.yaml. I will also paste the code for that file from our guide. Now that our dbt models and setup are complete, we're ready to move into the cloud and deploy dbt core. To do this, we'll utilize Shipyard. To begin on Shipyard, we'll need to, we'll need to create a free developer account. Navigate over to Shipyard signup page with the link in the description. Sign up with your email address and organization's name. Click to agree to the Shipyard privacy policy and terms of service, then click create an account. Now you'll need to verify your email address. 
After verification, you'll be able to enter your name and the password for your Shipyard account. After you do those things, you can now sign into Shipyard where you'll be taken to a page where you can select a project. Click Cancel, then you'll be redirected to the All Projects page. Navigate over to the sidebar and click Admin and then Integrations. Click the GitHub integration and then click Add Connection. Sign in the GitHub if you aren't already, then click where you want the Shipyard code sync installed. Click to allow access to all repositories or select repositories. If you select to only allow access to some repositories, then you will need to pick the repo that we have been working with. Click Save. Now that our GitHub integration is set up, we are ready to move in the Shipyard and create a blueprint that will run DBT Core. In Shipyard, a blueprint contains design specifications for a repeatable task. Our goal is to create a blueprint that can run DBT Core based on the specifications that we set up earlier. To create a blueprint, we will need to navigate to the blueprints by clicking Blueprints on the Shipyard sidebar. Click Add Blueprint on the top right hand corner. Select Python as your programming language. Under the Blueprint Variables, click Add Variable. For the display name, enter dbtcli command. Under reference name, enter dbt underscore command. Under default value, enter dbt run. We want to check the box to require this variable to be used. Under placeholder, enter the following text string. Enter the command for dbt. Click add variable, then select next step. This page is where we will supply our code for the blueprint. Shipyard gives you the ability to write the code directly in the web page. However, we will pull our code in from GitHub. On the web page, select Git, select the repository that we have been working in, click the source that you want the files to be pulled from. Generally, this will be main or master unless you want to pull from a specific branch. Under file to run, we want to enter execute underscore dbt.py. This will tell Shipyard what file to run inside the repository. Under Git Clone Location, select the option for unpacking into current working directory. S select Next Step. This will take us to the requirements page where we can add environment variables along with Python and system packages. Next, we will define our environment variables. If you remember back when we created our Profiles YAML page, we had our Redshift username and Redshift password that we left as environment variables so that they could be secure in the environment. We'll add those in here. Click the plus sign three times to add three environment variables. The first variable is dbt underscore profiles underscore dir. The value of that variable will be just a period. The second variable is Redshift underscore username with your username from Redshift as the value. The third variable is redshift underscore password, with your password being the value. We also need to add two Python packages to run the Python script that we created earlier. It's important to note that you could also do this in a, in a requirements.txt file inside of GitHub, but we'll do it inside of the Shipyard UI this time. The first package we need to add is dbt with a version of 0.21.1. The second package is markup safe with a version of 2.0.1. After you've added those two packages, click next step on the bottom right hand corner of the page. This will take us to the blueprint settings page where you can specify information about your blueprint as well as set up specific guardrails based on retries and runtime cutoff. Let's name our blueprint dbt execute CLI commands. Under synopsis, enter this blueprint runs a dbt core command. Click save and finish in the bottom right hand corner of your page. Then we will click use this blueprint, which will take us over to the fleet builder page to select the project. Since this is your first work inside a shipyard, we will create a new project to hold our dbt work. Click the drop down menu to expand it and select create a new project. Under project name, enter dbt core testing and under time zone, enter your specific time zone. Click Create Project, and now we can select our DBT Core Testing Project. After selecting our project, we will be taken into the Fleet Builder where we can create our first fleet. There is already a vessel created in our new fleet from the blueprint that we created earlier. 
In shipyard, a vessel is like a task or a job, while a fleet is made by connecting vessels together. A fleet can be thought of as a workflow and other applications. Click on the vessel that is already placed in the fleet. This will open up the vessel settings on the left side of the screen. We want to change the automatically generated name to dbt core cli command and change the dbt cli command to dbt debug. Next, click on the gear button on the left side of your screen to open the fleet settings. Change the name of your fleet to dbt core. Click save and finish on the bottom right of your screen. This will redirect us to a page telling us that the fleet has been created successfully. On that page, click Run Your Fleet, which will kick your fleet off to run and take you over to the Fleet Log page. The Fleet Log page gives us information about the length and status of the fleet run. The log also gives us a breakdown of each vessel's status and runtime. We can click the Gantt chart or the vessel name to go to the vessel output. On this page, we can see that our dbt command ran successfully. DBT debug running successfully lets us know that the connection between our cloud data warehouse and DBT is set up correctly. Thank you for joining me for part two of our DBT core series. You're, you're now ready to move on to part three. In part three, we will discuss running our DBT model and exporting DBT's documentation into a cloud data bucket. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to use the intercom button on the bottom right hand corner of the shipyard webpage. See you in part three.